invasive locally advanced breast cancer, staging. Stage 3A is the first of the locally advanced. It's T3N1. T1 to 3, N2. So the way I remember this is teeny tiny tune. Teeny is T3, N1, which looks like T E N I. Tiny tune is T I E N T O O. Um, so T1 to 3 is T I E. N2 would be any tune. Um, after that, stage 3B is T4, N0 to 2. So basically know that any T4 is stage 3B, which is on an in-service exam. And stage 3C is strictly limited um, to superclav, N3. As part of um, workup for locally advanced, you need um, CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis, 5 millimeter PTV margin on the nodes. The vast majority of patients will get mastectomy with axillary lymph node dissection, followed by adjuvant chemo, um, followed by post-mastectomy radiation and regional nodal radiation as well as endocrine, but even more will get neoadjuvant chemo, followed by mastectomy or even breast conservation surgery if you have downstaging, followed by adjuvant radiation and endocrine therapy or HER2 targeted therapy is indicated. So let's go back to option number one where they just get an upfront mastectomy with axillary nodal dissection followed by adjuvant chemo, followed by post mastectomy, radiation and or regional nodal radiation and endocrine therapy if indicated. Post mastectomy radiation indications are T4N0 or any node positive, definitely four or more nodes, strongly consider for one to three nodes for radiation to the chest wall and for RNI. T3N0 followed by radiation to the chest wall. You could consider RNI for certain circumstances. And then positive margin, get radiation to the chest wall. Um, the one to three nodes category is kind of a gray area. You would certainly consider radiation for any of the following. LVSI, um, greater than 20% nodal positivity ratio upon the dissection. Any node that was greater than two centimeters, any patient that is young, has grade three disease, is triple negative, has multicentric disease, has gross ECE. Again, the role for post mastectomy radiation in T3N0 is controversial. There's a seven to 12% local failure without radiation uh, based on NSABP per uh, Tajian. However, uh, if the patient is a young age, ER negative, LVSI positive, and certainly consider doing the radiation. Note, if they have T3N0 disease in a positive or close margin, and that's the only indication for treatment, then you can treat the chest wall only without regional nodal radiation. Reminder, chest wall radiation uses uh, one centimeter bolus every other day. As I mentioned before, most patients will actually get neoadjuvant chemo, followed by mastectomy or breast conservation surgery, followed by radiation if indicated, followed by adjuvant endocrine therapy or HER2 targeted therapy if indicated. You use that approach for N2 or N3 disease or early stage that has too large of a tumor to breast ratio to try to convert to breast conservation surgery or for T4. Chemo regimens are the same as those used in the adjuvant setting. You place clips in the tumor to mark for surgery after chemo, uh, pre-treatment axillary breast imaging with an MRI. Management of the XL, you get an F and A before chemotherapy of any suspicious nodes. If the patient is clinically node negative, you do a sentinel node biopsy after chemo. You need at least three sentinel nodes, otherwise the false negative rate is very high of 21%. So you would need an axillary dissection. If they're clinically node positive, then you biopsy, you place clips, and you do neoadjuvant chemo. Axillary nodal dissection for all afterward as part of surgery if they have clinically node positive disease. Post neoadjuvant chemo, they either get lumpectomy plus radiation or mastectomy, and then likely chest wall radiation as well. You treat um, as you would uh, with radiation if they want to treat to mastectomy. If you're getting breast conservation surgery, um, then you need radiation for all patients, tangents and regional nodal radiation for anyone with um, uh, persistently positive nodes on pathology, tangents and RNI for clinically node one, um, but pathologic complete response. Tangents only if they were clinically node negative and pathologically node negative. In other words, they only got neoadjuvant chemo because of a large tumor. If you're doing mastectomy followed by radiation uh, for almost all patients, chest wall and regional nodal for pathologically um, positive nodes, chest wall and RNI for clinically node positive but pathologically node negative, uh, chest wall and RNI of T4 if they were T3 and YPN0. I think giving radiation uh, would be chest wall alone. 
If they're T1 to 2 and neoadjuvant chemo was done through the small breast size and YPN0, then no radiation. If you're doing breast conservation surgery after neoadjuvant chemo, boost to the same indications as in a non-chemo setting, use standard fractionation. If there's superclaver IMN initially grossly positive and not resected, then boost to 60 or 66 gray. 60 is if there's response um, by imaging after chemo, 66 if there's no response. If there's residual disease after neoadjuvant chemo, they can get a benefit from six months of Zolota after radiation. If reconstruction is performed and radiation is needed, NCCN prefers a staged approach with immediate tissue expanders, then radiation, then doing the implant or auto tissue placement. You cannot put in a tissue expander after radiation. You can do radiation after a tissue expander. You can do radiation after immediate reconstruction, implant, uh, contracture, asymmetry, tram flap, uh, reconstruction often results in uh, fat necrosis with radiation. Here's the evidence. The first um, just general thing is that post mastectomy radiation confers a 10% survival benefit overall. The Danish 82B premenopausal overguard looked at 1,700 premenopausal high risk women. They had positive axillary nodes, a greater than 5 centimeter tumor, or invasion of the skin and pectoral fascia. So basically, at least T3 or N1. They got CMF chemo plus 48 to 50 gray to the chest wall and nodes versus CMF chemo alone. The 10-year overall survival benefit was 54% with post-mastectomy radiation versus 45% chemo alone. Disease-free survival is 48% with CMF plus radiation versus 34% CMF alone. Local regional recurrence is 9% with um, CMF plus radiation versus 32% CMF alone. The bottom line from this trial is that post-mastectomy radiation with chemo reduces the local regional recurrence and improves overall survival in high-risk premenopausal breast cancer patients. The criticism here is that there was a median of seven lymph nodes removed. In modern practice, it is known that axillary nodal dissection is of no benefit in one to two um, and positive, um, which equals sentinel node biopsy, so this is a poor surgery. Uh, two Danish 82C postmenopausal. This is um, 1,375 patients uh, postmenopausal, but younger than 70 with high risk disease again, meaning positive axillary nodes greater than five centimeters or invasion of the skin or pectoralis fascia. So basically, at least T3 or N1. All had an axillary nodal dissection and tamoxifen. They either randomized to tamoxifen plus 48 to 50 gray to the chest wall and nodes or tamoxifen alone. Ten year overall survival was 40. 5% with post-mastectomy radiation versus 36%. Disease-free survival is 36% versus 24%. Local regional recurrence is 8% versus 35%. Bottom line, post-mastectomy radiation reduced local regional recurrence and improves overall survival in high risk. Postmenopausal breast cancer, the comments, only half of these patients were tested for ER and PR. Third trial is British Columbia, Ragaz, 318 premenopausal. A status post modified radical mastectomy with uh, lymph nodes that were positive. Randomized to CMF plus 37.5 gray in 16 fractions. Post mastectomy, regional nodal irradiation to the chest wall, supraclav, and axilla. And then 35 gray in 16 fractions to bilateral IMNs. So again, premenopausal women modified radical mastectomy had positive nodes. They either got CMF and 37.5 and 16, post mastectomy and RNI to the chest wall supraclav axilla, 35, 16 to bilateral IMNs versus CMF alone. There's a 20 year 10% overall survival benefit, 47% versus 37%, 20 year local regional failure was 10% PMRT versus 26% CMF alone. Cardiac death was worse with radiation 1.8% versus 0.6%. Bottom line is hypofractionated post-mastectomy radiation with chemo improves overall survival for node-positive breast cancer compared to chemo alone, and this benefit was still present in one to three nodes. Next trial is the EBCTCG meta-analysis. Post-mastectomy benefit in one to three and greater than four nodes. This is a meta-analysis of 22 trials with greater than 8,000 patients looking at mastectomy plus axillary nodal dissection plus or minus post-mastectomy radiation. Chest wall, supraclap, plus excellent IMN. The majority of patients receive systemic treatment. Those that had pathologically node negative disease had no benefit with radiation for recurrence or um, breast cancer mortality. One to three nodes positive, 15 year local regional recurrence, 16.5% uh, uh, increase. Any recurrence, 11.5% increase breast cancer mortality. 
uh, 8% increase. Four or more nodes, um, local regional recurrence at 15 years, 19% increase. Um, any recurrence at 15 years, 9% increase. Breast cancer mortality, 9% increase. Um, bottom line, basically, that I have here, 20-year decrease in breast cancer mortality with the use of post-mastectomy radiation and clinically no positive was 8%. 66% no radiation versus 58.3% with radiation, and that's after an axillary nodal dissection and systemic therapy. 7% five-year local regional recurrence benefit for breast conservation plus radiation versus breast conservation alone for stage one. 7% um, versus 26%. 15-year breast cancer mortality reduced by 5.4%. Trials looking at the role of neoadjuvant chemo, uh, it does not improve overall survival, but the big role for neoadjuvant chemo is that it can convert from mastectomy to breast conservation 20 to 40 percent. First study here is NSABP 18, Fisher 1997. This is about 1,500 women, CT 1 to 3, N0 to 1. They either got pre-op docs and cyclophosphamide, so that's adriamycin cytoxan times 4 versus adjuvant AC times 4. Bottom line from NSABP B18 pre-op, AC allowed for downstaging of tumor, which is statistically significant, and for more breast conservation surgery, but actually has no nine-year overall survival difference. NSABP B27 is bare, 2003. This is about 2,500 women with operable breast cancer. Um, you had three different arms, neoadjuvant AC times four, followed by surgery versus AC times four, then docetaxel, then surgery, so AC plus T, then surgery, versus AC, then surgery, then docetaxel times four. Complete clinical response and pathologic uh, complete response rates were increased with the addition of docetaxel in these two arms, 40% versus 63%, 13% versus 26%. Breast conservation surgery is similar uh, between neoadjuvant AC and neoadjuvant AC plus T. Um, bottom line is that although the addition of docetaxel improves, uh, improves the clinical and pathologic complete response rate, it does not improve disease-free survival or overall survival and causes more toxicity. Um, Mamunus um, nomogram from NSABP B18 and B27. This was a nomogram with low, intermediate, high-risk groups. Predictors of local recurrence for breast conservation um, are age, pre-chemo clinical nodal status, and response to chemo. Predictors of local recurrence in modified radical mastectomy are the pre-chemo tumor size, the clinical nodal status prior to chemo, the pathologic response to chemo. In-service says clinically node positive, T3, young age, persistent nodes after chemo are prognostic. Ongoing studies, NSABP51 is looking at patients who are clinically node positive but pathologically node negative after neoadjuvant chemo, um, getting mastectomy or lumpectomy. If they get lumpectomy, they're randomized to whole.